welcome to Scramble Game Show. As you know, from time to time we uh, interview guests here, and uh, lately we have been doing a lot of the interviews, and many of our audience actually uh, uh, contact me and say they like the interviews, uh, although uh, the kids' games are exciting, but uh, I guess uh, sometimes uh, for adult audience, they rather hear some interesting uh, interview with uh, guests that have something special to say. Uh, as you know, last time we had people all the way from uh, Virginia uh, talking about a very interesting topic that is how, who, when uh, America is really discovered. And today we again have an interesting uh, guest, and this guest is local but still reasonably far from our studio, is uh, uh, from Bronxville. And this person himself is also a public access uh, a TV producer, so he's very familiar with our program uh, in the sense that I think this kind of program is very, very beneficial to the public. Uh, the content is totally independent of uh, whatever you call mainstream me media or any commercial control. So uh, whatever people say generally are from their heart, they are talking about their life experience, and they are talking about uh, truth. So today uh, we have this guest. His name is uh, Dr. Robert Flower. Uh, we will get to his details a little later on, so I'm not going to uh, introduce you now. Let's welcome uh, Dr. Flower. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Thank you for having me. And uh, as, as a uh, TV host, you know the uh, procedure so very well, and we can really get in down to the business. We okay. have one hour uh, time, okay. and as you know, sometimes this time actually goes very fast. Very fast, fast right? yes. yes. So first, let's you know, tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. Well, I, I actually started in real estate uh, over 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had uh, quite a varied career in real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I started out as a realtor selling houses and apartments. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't too long after I started that I kind of recognized that uh, uh, that wasn't the path that I, that I would be most uh, uh, capable of achieving my potential. Mm -hmm. So I went into investment real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, at the age of 26, I, I was uh, building my first uh, apartment house mm -hmm. uh, while I was in uh, college at night school. Oh, wow, that's at, interesting, uh, yeah. At, at uh, Fordham University. Mm -hmm. So I, I would be, um, I would go three, four nights a week and then during the summers and uh, I, I finally uh, achieved my uh, undergraduate uh, degree. Mm -hmm. And then I went on and did uh, some um, uh, postgraduate, mm -hmm. graduate and postgraduate. And I eventually, after 30, almost 30 years, I achieved my PhD. Oh, well, that is, uh, you know, uh, uh, persistence as a, as a trade is very admirable. Well, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun, very, very rewarding. Oh, yes. You know? uh, sometimes, occasionally, you see the graduation ceremony that uh, 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 a uh, person that uh, gets a degree that is, you know, in advanced age and so forth. People think that that's, uh, you know, I would personally feel that it, learning has no limit. That's you right. You can almost always learn. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Particularly uh, uh, if you uh, interest in some areas, okay, right. then you have the drive. And that mm -hmm. kind of learning is a pleasure. It's, it's not really a burden. So I, I would tell people, I mean, nowadays young people always, uh, you know, somehow uh, thinking that learning is a burden, you know, and that's no. wrong. If you have that feeling, that means you haven't really discovered a passion, discovered the areas that you're really interested yeah. in. Yeah, in fact, uh, my my uh, doctorate is uh, uh -oh. <laughs> some siren <laughs> going on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hot topic. Yeah, uh, the uh, uh, my doctorate is actually uh, a, a doctor of philosophy mm -hmm. in uh, uh, general system sciences which has nothing to do with uh, real estate at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was something that uh, that I really had a, a keen... General in system in what sense? The social system? No, uh, uh, well, it's general systems cover all different types of systems. Mm -hmm. what, uh, general systems uh, is uh, the study of different systems in connection with uh, nature. Mm -hmm. uh, your uh, uh, chemistry, 
biology, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mathematics, mm -hmm. physics. Mm -hmm. um, those principles are utilized in the various systems, social systems, mm -hmm. behavioral systems, mm -hmm. um, you know, business systems, organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, I, I eventually wrote four books mm -hmm. on this discovery of um, a new type of intelligence, mm -hmm. which which I discovered. But in in my real estate career, I, uh, I I'm a licensed uh, real estate broker, a realtor, mm -hmm. and I have been such for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, a licensed uh, commercial appraiser. I see. Uh -huh. In a number of states, uh, I do uh, do commercial appraisals. Mm -hmm. At least that was my background mm -hmm. uh, after I got out of sales mm -hmm. and did very well uh, in that arena. Mm -hmm. And of course, investments. Mm -hmm. um, during that time, I, I taught uh, real estate economics at uh, the United States Military Academy mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I taught at NYU. I taught at uh, Seton College for mm -hmm. about five years. So I, I've had a, a very very interesting background. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. And mm -hmm. I've met a lot of interesting people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have properties not only in the uh, New York and uh, surrounding areas, but mm -hmm. uh, out west. Mm -hmm. We own some properties in yeah. Arizona and. Colorado. Right. So, we'll, we'll, we'll get to your shows a little bit later on, but mm -hmm. uh, let me just ask a couple of questions there. Sure. Are you a native New Yorker? Yes. You always you know, born in New York State? I was born in uh, in uh, Yonkers. Mm -hmm. My father was born in Yonkers, mm -hmm. and my grandfather came to Yonkers mm -hmm. actually in uh, 1896. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So we are old time Yonkers, Yonkers. people, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we spent our entire lives there. Uh, so your your business principally is around in Yonkers? Well, my business encompasses, um, uh, no, I, I'm pretty much all over. I, I, yeah. I represented uh, Ford Motor Company and Chrysler in 17 states. I was there. Uh, sold sort of appraiser? Prop, yeah, property tax uh -huh. consulting work, which mm -hmm. you had my daughter Bobby Ann on. She's right, an attorney. Right. She's uh, since taken over my uh, my uh, mm -hmm. uh, property tax uh, consulting business. Mm -hmm. But I was uh, the exclusive property tax consultant for Ford Motor Company for 20 years mm -hmm. in 17 states. Right. Uh, I, I, I did everything for them, you know, including flying out to Detroit, my wife, every now and then to, to set up their files because they, yeah. they, they mm -hmm. were so disorganized uh, right, right, in that right. respect. Uh, well, in those days that, that these uh, big corporations uh, are much more into buying real estate, mm -hmm. uh, not like today, sometimes they shy away from owning the real estate rather than just lease and you know rent. So those days, I think they do need appraisers and uh, they do need people that is really uh, expert in the f in the area so that they don't you know get round investment you know? yeah you're absolutely right actually real estate uh, started to really boom in this country back in the mid 70s when mm -hmm. the, the insurance companies made a major move into the acquisition of uh, of real estate especially uh, large income producing real estate mm -hmm. prior to the mid 70s uh, real estate was a very staid right. type of industry, mm -hmm. you know, very, very predictable. Right. Uh, if you wanted to, to get a mortgage, you can get a mortgage six months down the road. Yep. Never worry about the rate changing or, right, 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 you know, right, right. it was right. one rate. And stay. But then when the insurance companies came into the business, mm -hmm. uh, they really spiced things up. I mean, at first they were spending, uh, overspending for properties. They, you know, they didn't really have any background but their their concept was look we think it's a good investment mm -hmm. let's buy as much as we can yeah and uh, it'll work itself out real estate will grow into yeah. the value mm -hmm. and in those days yes no those kind of concept actually uh, was the fundamental reason that caused the bubbles that we had oh yes yeah and uh, unfortunately I I think it's not going away because, you know, uh, we've been sort of having five or six years downtime or since the bubble, uh, but real estate is coming up. Some yes. areas now claim they are pretty hot. Yes. And uh, you were talking about investment realty uh, properties. Uh, some areas uh, is so hot that, uh, again, these, these investors or insurance company, whoever is behind, uh, go in there and rush to, to buy them. And again, that would create you know, a bubble again. Yes. 
Oh. And also mm -hmm. another thing, you probably, uh, as expert, you, uh, you, you explain this. They tend to use uh, for commercial property uh, occupancy as a measuring, you know, value. When a building is fully occupied, mm -hmm. right? So the value is very high. Right. It turns out, in my personal feeling, you know, if I buy a property, if I bought a property that is only half occupied, that means I have half, you know, space that I could further rent it out, mm -hmm. and further derive income. So why should I buy a property that is 90% occupied and fully valued and then buy top dollar and then there's not much more to really, you know, grow. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem to make a sense to me as a, I'm a physicist, or I mean, I'm not a, in a real estate business, but I just, you know, want to ask you, you, you think that makes sense? Well, it, 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 it depends on your, uh, your investment uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it does make sense to purchase a property that's only partially developed mm -hmm. and use your skills and knowledge and uh, capital to improve it, but then again, there are investors who uh, who don't want that. They what they want is something that's more permanent, mm -hmm. something that's in place, and uh, the, and they can trust that they don't have to work that hard at it. Mm -hmm. So you know, it 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 varies with the type of mindset mm -hmm. that the investor has. I, I I tend to agree with you, except that in certain areas today, like you know, office Buildings, areas, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, the market still is is very soft. Yeah, most know? places are soft, but yeah. I think uh, I heard either Florida or some place, couple of places now uh, already turn mm -hmm. around and people are bidding, and the inventory was very low. Yeah. For a f you know, few locations, uh, when inventory low, I would say, well, no, stay away from that area. You go there's a plenty of <laughs> you know, places in the United States you can uh, do investment. Well, uh, there again, it all depends. Uh, Florida has turned around; it is hot. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to Arizona; Arizona mm -hmm. is is not doing well at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, uh, quite candidly, I own property in Arizona, which I bought many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't buy in Arizona. It, mm -hmm. It's going to take too too much time and too much energy to get it back to I see. profitability. Sure, sure. I'm you sure uh, that there is a, a certain criteria for investors to mm -hmm. look at it. You know, yes. from uh, uh, overall economy, uh, local government regulation, yes. okay, uh, population growth, many factors that right. you look into that. Uh, but I think somehow the bubble is built uh, based on some assessment that is so, uh, in my view, is not very scientific. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> well, you hit it right on the head. No, it's a very subjective determination. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, um, are very emotional about it. I mean, that's how the bubble happened. You know, people got so caught up in yeah. bidding on, on properties mm -hmm. and just just throwing caution to the wind. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we in 2000, late 2005, we saw it coming. Yes. And we managed to to get out as mm -hmm. best we could. We couldn't totally get out mm -hmm. because uh, at that time it, I had friends and realtors and investors that were telling me, "Oh, you're, you're too old-fashioned. You know, you're too conservative and everything. And property property will never go down. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, people in my own family." Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just uh, told them that, uh, no, you, when you violate principles, mm -hmm. I don't care what the principles are about, mm -hmm. when you violate principles, there's going to be repercussions. Oh, yes, definitely. Right? Yeah. And in fact, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we're not at that stage again now. Well, I th I'm afraid that the, 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 you know, it might because we are a large country. We have lots of land, okay? We have uh, many cities that can have potential to be developed, but for some reason, we still have this, you know, create this bubble based on, I think, humans uh, 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 very subjective, non-scientific selection. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, um, um, let, let's say, uh, um, give example, if you, if you have a property that's fully occupied, is selling at a top dollar. And yet, if you calculate, uh, if I want to build another building, just same, exactly same, okay? So-called replacement 
Yes, replacement value. Yes, value. Right. I can build a uh, building less than what you're going to pay for this building. It, it doesn't strike you that well. Yeah. Why should I invest in a building that is already you know old? Uh, that is more than a replacement, brand new buildings, right? Well, you know, you 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 are so on target. Uh, I wish I could take you to some of my uh, my appraisal and re <laughs> realtor uh, friends, uh, because you know, in, in real estate, um, they say that uh, uh, the, the the value of real estate is what a willing buyer will pay yep. to a willing seller. Right, okay? right. That's always a time. Right, yeah, and and I say. No, mm -hmm. because there is no such thing as an objective determination of what is willing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Willing is not something that's manage, uh, right. uh, measurable, mm -hmm. okay? However, when you what you're talking about is the cost approach, mm -hmm. which I've always uh, valued as a scientific method mm -hmm. of determining what the value of a property is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whether it's a uh, income producing property right. or it's a home. Right. I mean, everything is measurable. Right. Everything is determinable. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, I totally, I totally agree with where you're going. And, so, and uh, if you don't mind, I'm prying sort sure. of uh, your your uh, formula secrets uh, about uh, investment because uh, from a layman, you know, I feel okay. There's a raw material cost. There's a land cost. You know, there's labor right. costs and so on. So. The replacement cost of a building got to be a major factor in your mind investment, right? I can understand when you have fully occupied a building, you have cash, you know, flow, and uh, mm -hmm. you you can sit there collect money and so on. Uh, it, it may be better than putting money in the bank, so to speak. Right. But there's downside. There's a risk, right? If uh, uh, next to your property, all of a sudden next year a brand new building comes up that is built cheaper than your building and then obviously they can compete and offer you know things so then you might lose your your tenants you might you know lose your uh, steady income mm -hmm. so those kind of considerations somehow uh, does not lead to a formula for investor to really sort of look at the just you can't just look at the cash balance and the, the, the books and say, oh great you know every month you get this much money yeah yeah, you see, uh, there's a problem with the the, uh, the scientific aspect, the cost approach, and there's two. Number one, very few people are capable and willing to go out and do a cost approach valuation. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, uh, what throws off the cost valuation is uh, what we call depreciation. Mm. Okay, mm. because just because you build something, you you can't com uh, compare a forty-year-old building mm. uh, with a new building, mm -hmm. because there are, there is such a thing as depreciation, uh, physical depreciation, mm. functional depreciation. Are you alluded to the tax purpose-wise? No, no, not at all. What I'm not alluding okay. what I'm alluding to is like, for instance, if you take a forty-year-old building. Mm -hmm. Uh, apartment building, right. and let's say uh, the the rents are in that building. Just for argument's sake, a thousand dollars a unit. Mm -hmm. But you take a new building in the same location, mm -hmm. and the rents are going to be fifteen hundred dollars because it, it's new and has a lot more amenities right, and, right. And, and better condition. Mm -hmm. The difference between the thousand dollars and the fifteen hundred dollars is depreciation. Mm -hmm. We call it economic depreciation. Mm -hmm. Economic obsolescence actually. Mm -hmm. And people, uh, you, you'll often hear people say, well if you were to build this property uh, it would be worth X amount of dollars. Well that's true, mm -hmm. but you have to take into account that there are obsolescence factors, that there are depreciation factors uh, being applied to the, to the building. So in, in that sense, it becomes even more scientific because there's more that you have to understand and more factors mm -hmm. that you have to build into the valuation right, right, process. Right, right. This, this, I understand this part, but I, I also in the same vein, it puzzles me is that we have these tax laws that uh, offer you uh, depreciation that you can yeah. do. So if you're a property owner, you you bought a property and you rent it out and so on, you run the business, every year you depreciate, you take the tax benefit, Right. So at the end, that the property value actually, uh, you know, from a tax point of view, it's down quite drastically. Yes. But yet, 
when they sell to somebody, they're not going to sell at the depreciated value. No. Right? right. <laughs> they sell at the market value. Yes. And somebody comes in, bought that. Right. So this kind of, you know, sometimes people say flipping, N not all the cases of flipping, but it's call it a flipping. When you flip like this, you artificially, artificially bring the property value from down maybe already zero as far as tax purposes is concerned. Mm -hmm. Bang, you know, put a full value and somebody else come in to buy that. That's when I think the cost analysis is critical because you can buy a brand new building <laughs> less than this old building, right? Well, if, if, if you could, then you're, then that property is well over over uh, price. I, I tell you, sometimes, uh, you know, I, I'm not a tax expert, I'm not in this area, but, uh, but I just, you know, randomly thumb and use, mm -hmm. use my head to think about it. Maybe mm -hmm. your natural intelligence is working. <laughs> uh, you know, our tax law is sometimes screwy anyway, right? I mean, all these, these formulas, loopholes, what a, it, it muddles the whole true value sometimes yes all right yeah. that's when people say well you invest you gotta you gotta figure out the depreciation i buy a brand new building if i can use a formula it's 20 year or 10 year depreciation boy just depreciation alone can offset my other income other you know property so on you know an ordinary investor or if you don't get into this deep enough you wouldn't think about that no right? uh, and uh uh you know the concept is uh, i mean it's valid uh, mm -hmm. you, because what you're doing is what the government says is the property is going to depreciate yeah. in physically right depreciate in value mm -hmm. so you should take out that much money each year am, you know amortized over right. however, however many years f if you're going to demolish it at the end of the building. exactly <laughs> but that doesn't happen that way <laughs> we we don't demolish the bill in most cases anyway yeah. <laughs> we don't demolish the buildings in right. fact they end up being more because the basis mm -hmm. is economic. Right. It's not physical or, right. or material. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the that's the distinction that you're referring to. Yeah. Yes. Well, this is interesting. Let's let's get back a little bit to about your show because I'm somewhat related and somewhat I think it's mm -hmm. interesting to our audience. Uh, perhaps people now can you know also watch your. Uh, you have te two TV program, right? Yes. One is called uh, Master Pattern. Master Pattern, right? The other is called the uh, Achievement Ach Forum. That's right? correct. Okay, let's take the master pattern first. Right. That's definitely related to what we just discussed. Yes. Our right? real estate thing. Yes. So talk uh, a, you know, a little yeah. bit about that. The, the master pattern is a, a show that it, it's, uh, it was conceived on the notion of uh, the uh, mathematics and geometry of this natural intelligence which, which I discovered. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, it was very interesting because the way I discovered it is uh, I had this penchant for um, investigating ancient sites. Mm -hmm. and I used to go all over the world um, investigating these sites and read books on them and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I found that uh, there was this uh, uh, mathematics, there was this geometry and higher mathematics that was involved in the development and location of these sites. Hmm. And I the, thought... This uh, is a, a historical site? Or yeah, the, uh, the, the Great Pyramid, uh, oh, Pyramid of Tiwanaku, mm -hmm. Stonehenge, all of them. So, um, you know, and I went to all these places, mm -hmm. um, and I, I had some very exciting adventures, mm -hmm. and, you know, revolutions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. you know, I had to fight my way back home and whatnot. But um, uh, what I discovered was that there, there was this mathematics and geometry that was in indicative of, of each and every one of these sites, very, very common uh, mm -hmm. allied um, uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. Then I further discovered that they were in a, a number of sacred scriptures, mm -hmm. including the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, you know, including um, many of the ancient um, uh, Oriental uh, mm -hmm. teachings. Books, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I, I investigated further and um, I started to utilize the, these mathematics and created this uh, mathematical model, this mm -hmm. geometric model mm -hmm. that I use in economics, but principally in the stock market. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do uh, is I have, a, I have a, a system where I can predict when a major move is going to occur on, with a stock, with a commodity, with the stock market. 
Uh, now it's only, uh, in many cases, it's only a day move, mm -hmm. all right? But I can predict the accuracy of a move uh, with 95% accuracy. This is intriguing. Uh, yes. Can you cite a one example or some uh, you know, past case, whatever? Well, I predicted that we were going to have a run-up in uh, silver and gold uh, this week, uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And indeed, uh, uh, silver ran up uh, between Wednesday and Thursday, ran up uh, uh, over 2%. So the model must have some parameters. What What is you are, you're talking about? Strictly, yeah. strictly mathematical and ge geometric. has nothing to do with uh, uh, quantitative uh, analysis or, or uh, uh, data, market data or whatnot. It's strictly, strictly so, modeling. Okay, let's first take the geom geometric part. Yes. What is the geometry that it uh, enter into this kind of prediction? Uh, pi, mm -hmm. phi, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, the, uh, the natural number, Euler's number. Mm -hmm. Uh, I use basically those three mm -hmm. uh, to uh, create uh, an algorithm and to, uh, uh, w what I did, uh, as a physicist you would understand this, is what I do is I, I use two major, po two major market points, mm -hmm. either highs or lows, doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. And I uh, uh, ascribe a, a pi compass to both points and complete my circle. Mm -hmm. At the far end of the circle in the future mm -hmm. is when the move will occur. Mm -hmm. And that that happens 95% of the time. So what's happening is there's an energy that exists between these two market periods mm -hmm. uh, that concludes by, uh, I guess like similar to when suns die, stars burst, right? Um, at the end of that energy period, it either blows up or blows down. I mean, I, I okay, can't, I, 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 don't, I don't have the ability, I, let me be clear. Mm -hmm. At this point, I don't have a clear ability to determine which direction it's going to go. Right? Mm -hmm. my, my, my viewers are always after me, where is it going? You know, well, you know what? I wish I knew. You, you only can say there will be an occurrence of an event. Yes. Uh, but you don't know the directions. Yes. So right. And by the, the way, I could do that with human behavior. Mm -hmm. I could take a, a person, take life events, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how accurate they are, mm -hmm. and I could predict that. Yeah, th this is similar to uh, many uh, uh, this uh, uh, in the Oriental, this prediction uh, theory, uh, It's they call it. Uh, uh, fortune telling or whatever term they right. call it. Uh, it, it's somehow they claim it's mathematical so therefore um, the parameters they use uh, tend to be like your birthday or some things and so on then they um, they make some kind of a prediction of some uh -huh. event will occur sometimes could be very serious like a death or something you know. yeah uh, so you th you are into this line of a uh, sort mm -hmm. of thinking? Uh, yeah, I've been doing that for uh, 33 years. I see. So in this show, Master Pattern, uh, you are applying this principle yes. to uh, sort of real life uh, Yes, ap to, to actual right? actual trading. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do very well with it. You know, we, we usually buy options, some stocks, but mostly options. Mm -hmm. And we do very well. And um, we answer we answer questions, you know, with mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. so um, that people have about. So, market. when you say you take some uh, uh, data point, but you just said it's not numerical. So, for for example, options. Options mm -hmm. is is a a, a price uh, of the stock uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, that correlates to the premium means higher the premium that means people expect that stock goes up and lower the premium stock goes down and so forth so so which parameters you let's say which we'll take any r arbitrary you know take a general electric let's say it has a stock probably around 20 something 23 24 right now uh, and there are a lot of Analysts that talk about this company has been so long and it's well run and so forth. There is a prediction, this and so forth. And the other side of the story is, oh, they are so over matured and they, uh, 
uh, they've been uh, uh, sort of lucky because they had this capital, you know, uh, basically like a bank business, which is gone now, so forth. So you never know what these things really uh, is talking about. Yet, you look at the options, and some people believe, of course, go up. Therefore, you have either call or put on both sides, and they have these things, right? Mm -hmm. So can you take example like that and say, what would you take, and how would you predict what kind of event, you know? Yeah, w let me just say this about this whole notion. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, um, uh, there's a, fra a fa phrase in the Bible uh, where the master says, even the very hairs on your head are numbered, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I don't want to say I don't believe in analysts, but my experience has been that um, uh, what I'm doing is far more accurate than what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they might be able to tell with better accuracy which way it's going to go, so I pay attention to them for that reason. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, to say you know, when it's going to happen, they, they, they couldn't tell you. They don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. So now, as to your specific uh, question, um, if you take a major move in um, General Electric, mm -hmm. is it? Uh, if you take, a, you take two major moves, either up or down, mm -hmm. and you use those a, as your- They occur at different times. They right? occur at different times. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what the time period is. And you use them as the basis for uh, your, uh, your, your PI uh, application. Mm -hmm. uh, you will then know